In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello again, everybody, and welcome today to our Mass for Wednesday of the 28th week in Ordinary Time. And so, my brothers and sisters, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Reading today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You, O man, are without excuse, every one of you who passes, passes judgment. For by the standard by which you judge another, you condemn yourself since you, the judge, do the very same thing. We know that the judgment of God on those who do such things is true. Do you suppose, then, you who judge those who engage in such things, and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you hold his priceless kindness, forbearance, and patience in low esteem, unaware that the kindness of God would lead you to repentance? By your stubbornness and in impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself, for the day of wrath and revelation of the just judgment of God, who will, who will repay everyone according to his works, eternal life to those who seek glory, honor, and immortality through perseverance in good works, but wrath and fury to those who selfishly disobey the truth and obey wickedness. Yes, affliction and distress will come upon everyone who does evil. Jew first, and then Greek. But there will be glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good. Jew first, and then Greek. There is no partiality with God. The Word of the Lord. Response is, Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Only in God is my soul at rest. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be disturbed at all. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Only in God be at rest my soul, for from him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you give back to everyone according to to his works. Trust in him at all times, O my people, pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention, attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you, scholars of the law. You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. The Gospel 
of the Lord. So, both in our first reading and in our gospel reading today, we have some very pointed words uh, from Paul and from Jesus, really challenging our, us to really be honest with ourselves about whether or not we're being consistent and we're being, and if we fall into hypocrisy or not. Are we really judging others for doing the same things? Are we calling out other people for doing the exact same things that we are doing? Or, um, or are we, you know, paying, as he, Jesus says here, paying tithes of mint and of rue and all these things, but yet aren't really miss, are, are, are really missing the point of what we're supposed to be doing with that stuff? And I think the one thing that kind of crystallizes all of this is Jesus' last line, where he says to people, or he says rather to the Pharisees, you impose on people burdens hard to carry, but yet you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. So the Pharisees are instructing people and expecting people to do certain things, imposing, as Jesus says, burdens on them, and requiring them to do these things. But yet the Pharisees are unwilling to do any of that kind of stuff themselves. So they're, they're holding these people to a separate set of standards that they want to be applied to themselves. And I think it's worth reflecting today in light of this, when have we done that in our lives? When have we done what St. Paul said, judge others for doing pretty much the same thing that we have done, or doing exactly what Jesus says here, imposing burdens on people hard to carry and then not being willing to do that ourselves, and not being willing to share in that same level of judgment. I read an interesting story the other day about how, you know, when people, psychologists, they ask people to talk about uh, the worst thing that's ever happened to them, and then they, or the worst thing that's ever been done to them. And they can go on at great length about, you know, the wrong that's been done to them, and they use, you know, very strong language to describe it. And then the psychologists turn the question around and ask the people to describe what was the worst thing that you did to somebody else. And there's always, they said, uh, a qualifying language employed in that, in that question. It's like, well, you know, I did these things, but there was, you know, I was very stressed, I had a lot of things going on, and I, you know, didn't treat this person right, but, you know, here's the explanation for it. And, or a lot of other similar things. You know, it's like, when they say, from my perspective, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, I can explain this, I can qualify this, but when they're talking about something that somebody else did, it's, there's no qualifiers, there's no, there's no other qualifications allowed, it's just simply, this happened, and this was wrong. But I think it's worth asking ourselves, when have we fallen into this trap? When have we done exactly what was stated in that interview? We talk about wrongs that have been done to us, but then we don't except that maybe we in our lives have done somewhat similar things or have not shown the level of courtesy or respect to others that we should have. And just to ask ourselves, when have we done this? When have we been inconsistent? And how can we uh, fix that so that we don't fall into that level of inconsistency again and don't become like the Pharisees here that Jesus is talking about who impose on people burdens hard to carry but yet you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch those burdens. So let us now offer our prayers and petitions to God. We pray for Pope Francis, for Cardinal Sukrich, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for them and their intentions, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are ill in any way, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, uh, physically, However, uh, for them and their healing, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for this faith community, uh, for its intentions, and as it goes through the Renew My Church process, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for the intentions of all those watching this Mass, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. And good and gracious God, we ask you to hear our prayers and to grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, accompanying with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Blaise our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present to the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, <clears throat> that as you feed us <clears throat> with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And let us conclude, as always, with the <clears throat> Renew My Church prayer. We pray together. Lord Jesus, you speak to us today as you spoke to holy men and women who have gone before us. In every age and in our own time, you call to us and say, Renew my church. Pour out the gift of your Holy Spirit upon us, and so enable us to hear you clearly, to listen to each other attentively, to imagine our future boldly, to discern your direction wisely, to persevere in your holy will courageously, to say together in charity, to surrender our own plans readily, to embrace the greater good, to hand on your gifts to future generations. May we remain in the holy company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Apostles, and all the saints. May their example and presence inspire us with patient confidence in the work of your grace. We ask this of you who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.